next, uh, uh, I don't know, hour or so, is we're going to be working with uh, the, the UCITM website. And I know uh, you brought in your, your laptops. Um, but what I want to do is, uh, first of all, I'm going to give you a tour of the website. So, uh, this is the, uh, so this is the UCITM website. And uh, uh, so the, 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 the general website, and we have information for um, not only home garden, gardeners and landscape professionals, but also for agricultural pests. So I guess there's an avocado grower in the group. There may be some of the rest of you who have a commercial farm. Then you would go to the agricultural pests group. We have a little bit of information on uh, natural environment pests, things of like forests and rangeland, for instance. And then we have a section on exotic and invasive pests. But for most of the time, you're going to be going to the home and gardens um, uh, part of the website here. Um, and so we will uh, go there. And this is um, this page, and you can only uh, see part of it. And I realize that the type is going to be really small for some of you. Uh, but it, right now, we're going to look at it's the same uh, site that is on the handout here, so the little type. So the way that the, the page is, or, is uh, organized, there's some key things. Uh, there's a gold bar at the top here. And this really actually takes you to uh, other parts of the web page, uh, website outside of the home and garden. But it's a, uh, another way to get back to uh, some of the other information. Um, we have this, like, up here, there, one of the things says publications. And that will take you to, if you want to order, for instance, uh, some of these books here, or refer somebody to one of the uh, IPM books, you would go to the publication site. Uh, and then we have uh, along the left column some of the same information, uh, but here is where you find uh, the weed gallery, the natural enemies gallery, um, uh, some pesticide information, but I would go to the stuff on, on this page first, and then also uh, publication and events and workshop and also online training. But here again, the, the uh, home and garden page is where you're mostly going to go. Uh, as you look at this, um, we have the main content here in this column. But I will first of all refer you also to these quick links, because these are uh, areas of the web page that you will maybe want to uh, access. Um, if you want to quickly access past notes, now those are our peer-reviewed publications on multiple uh, uh, pests. We've got more than 160 now. You would go to the pest note quick links here. And you can see that we have pest notes on insects, mollusks, and nematodes, plant diseases, weeds, uh, you know, birds, mammals. So you, if you want a plant disease, you can jump down there and, and, and get these. And these go to the pest notes, which are available as um, uh, online HTML. Uh, these are the, the quick tips, and, and you have, the, so what the quick tips are is they're sort of abridged versions. Uh, the pest notes are pretty sophisticated, and some people want less information, and so the quick tips are uh, quick information um, that has been abstracted from the pest notes. Um, and you will have these cards available for you to take uh, when you're going out in the field and um, visiting the people. So the quick tips are there, recent updates are here. And the other thing we have is we've, we've been building a library of uh, YouTube videos. And uh, so the video library is where that is. Um, the, the, uh, and, and so most of them are pretty short videos of, and they're kind of fun. We've got some good ones on, you know, how to look for bed bugs. And so UC, UCIPM has a, uh, a YouTube channel. And you're, you may want to link to that on your... Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Why, couldn't you make it bigger, you know? <laughs> Wait. Oh. 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 But we have, uh, we have now 28 videos on there. And most of them are, are short ones that are, you know, you can, you know, if you're giving a presentation or something, you may want to show a short, short video just to 
liven it up. The bed bug one will probably liven it up. But we have, we have uh, some neat ones, like this one is uh, uh, aphid eating insects. And, and with that, they're, they're actually, see? Oh, get up. <laughs> and so, you know, you can wake up your audience by <laughs> Okay, so those are the quick links to some interesting things. The rest of the information, we've got it organized according to where these pests occur. So we have the pests of homes, uh, structures, peoples, and pets. And as you can see, we have this, uh, and, and in this category, we've got uh, insects that sting and wood destroying, et cetera, and on all the vertebrate pests. So if you've got somebody coming in with one of those kind of carpet beetles, fleas, head lice, mosquitoes, any of those kinds of pests that isn't a pest of plants, this is the section you're, you're, you're going to go to. If a person is coming to you with a, um, or you're looking for information on a pest of plants, then you're going to go down to this section, or the, the pest of gardens and landscapes. Um, and there's a couple of ways of, of accessing this information. You can choose the species of plant that your pest is on, or if you know what the pest is, you can go directly to the pest type. But say, for instance, um, you have a, uh, a pest on um, uh, an ornamental tree or shrub. You would you would go to the pest of trees and shrubs. And so here we have. And earlier somebody was talking about knowing the family of your trees. So if you don't know what it is, you can actually sort these by family, or you can sort them by genus. So um, if you if you want, so that's one way for you to learn your your trees. But so uh, say somebody's coming in and they have a uh, a problem, uh, say so they have a, a problem on, uh, any, what was that? How about a zillion? And so if you have a, so remember in the back of the book, I showed you uh, that there is uh, just a certain number of pests that are common on these plant species. So if you, uh, you can use, the book has symptoms in it, but here we've got uh, a little bit of information about plant identification in a picture that sort of, oh yeah, it is an azalea. Um, it's certainly not identification guide. But then here we have the common problems that are on azalea. And so you can go and take a look. So for instance, and some of these will go to um, pest notes. Um, so here we have like thrips. Uh, but, uh, thrips are a, a problem on azalea, so these will go to a, a pest note. Uh, some will go to special pages. Now, when you go to the pest note pages, you'll notice that you have um, some buttons up here. Uh, you can download the PDF, so that gets a, a nice uh, printed uh, version for printing out. Um, the quick tip is that short version that you have there, and for some people that's what they want. And then we also have information in Spanish, and that's the Nota Breva. So there's, for, for many pests, we do have uh, Spanish information, but it's generally the translation of the, the quick tips. Um, and as long as we're here on the thrips, I'll show you some of the parts of the pest note. Uh, so these, again, are um, information. They're pretty sophisticated information. But you guys are master gardeners, so you want sophisticated information. Um, you, you'll have some people coming to you who just say, no, just give me the bottom line. And then you may want to just refer them to the quick tips. But here, you want to know as much as possible about the, the biology and how to identify. In this case, for the thrips, it covers quite a few thrips. And under identification, uh, you're going to see that there's a, uh, actually a whole series of photographs of, of different thrips that you might have on different plants. So there's a, a, a lot of information here. And I, yeah, no, no, no. Okay, um, so I'm spending too much time on this. But I do want to, um, uh, okay, so when we get to management of this, one of the things on, on the bottom of most of these pest notes, 
Um, there's information on, so you'll see, you've got information on cultural controls, pruning, all this kind of stuff, reflective mulch, chemical control, there's information on biological control, and then of course there's information on chemical control because sometimes pesticides are necessary. You need to read that information carefully. But some people are interested in um, what the um, issues involved in different kinds of uh, pesticides are. Uh, and we have now on the bottom of most of our pest notes uh, this uh, compare risks button. And um, it gives you uh, the pesticides that are mentioned in the Thrips pest note. What I don't want you to do is to go immediately here and say, use these pesticides because some of them are better than others and you need to read the information about them. But after you've read that information, and when you're, another um, thing you want to put in your, your decision for uh, pesticide use in addition to efficacy is what's the impact on the environment. And so th this button tells you for each of these ingredients its relative risk for water quality, uh, aquatic wildlife, natural enemies, bees, people, then the acute, so that's the, the acute toxic, and then also long-term, which would be cancer, reproductive effects, and those types of things. And for those, we either just list, say whether it's in the Cal, uh, uh, Cal Proposition 65 list or the US EPA suspected uh, or uh, known carcinogen lists. And so this can give you a quick overview um, you know, if you're really concerned about the impacts on bees or that type of thing. So as we look on this list, for instance, uh, we can see that, uh, of course, that some of the safest materials are, are going to be soaps um, and uh, 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 some, of the, some of the oils as well. It's fun to say this is too bad. Where was that icon at the bottom of what page? It's on the bottom of, so any pest note. Yeah. Any pest note, it's on the bottom of the page. There are some pest notes we don't have that information for, but so you have to scroll down at the bottom of any pest note. Um, okay, so so that's how, and for instance, so we have uh, lists of um, uh, your problems on fruit trees. We don't have these ordered by scientific name and family, but again, these are gonna give you the problems in um, uh, apples, for instance. In the fruit trees and vegetables, we actually have information on cultural tips. So again, if you have a problem in apples and you're not sure what it is, go to this page and uh, you should get most of the things. I want to show you the lawn. The lawns and turf section is a little different. For lawns and turf, we have um, uh, uh, information. We have some pest notes on lawn insects, diseases, and these things. But then we also have the UC Guide to Healthy Lawns. And this is an interactive guide uh, for healthy lawns. Because um, the thing about lawns, they, they, they're getting a bad rap, and they're getting bad rap for a lot of reasons. One is water use. Um, but one really shouldn't be, uh, you should be able to grow a healthy lawn without having to use pesticides. And so this isn't the UC Guide to managing pests in lawns, it's the UC guide uh, to maintaining healthy lawns, lawns because the, the fact is if, if your lawn is, the reason that we grow turf grass at all is because it's a wonderful com uh, competitive, resilient plant that, you know, it's amazing how it can just take over the whole area and not allow very many weeds to get in. And it, Generally, it doesn't have insect problems, and generally, it doesn't have disease problems. I mean, the turf is is pretty tough stuff, and if you're growing it properly, and so if you grow it properly, um, uh, and so this gives you a guide on how to grow it properly. So one of the important things is you got to choose the right turf species. One thing we probably need to update this with a few more of some of the native grasses that are coming on, they're, they're not on here so much. Um, we do have some of the, uh, the, the red fescues and stuff. And, and how to, to um, plant a lawn, lawn renovation is very important because if you're seeing uh, big brown spots or more weeds than you can handle, then that doesn't mean you go out and apply the pesticides. What it means is you probably, you need to take out the lawn or part of the lawn and either plant something else or renovate it by planting new lawn. Um, 
And then there's a lot of information here. Is a key part is this lawn care for established lawns. Um, and so this includes a lot of information on how to maintain lawns so it's healthy. So we've got information on mowing and irrigating. Uh, on the irrigation, for instance, you have actually an interactive program um, to help you um, uh, uh, time your irrigation uh, and, and so that you limit your irrigation. And one of the exercises you're going to do is go through this, choose your area, and you're going to figure out uh, how much you should irrigate at a certain time of year. And then also, it'll help you calculate the amount of fertilizer to, to use. So all of these are, are, are guides for you. Um, all right, so that's, you can go in by plant, very similar for vegetables and, and flowers also. Okay, so if you do know what your pest is, you can go into the section called Common Pests. Uh, right now, uh, for the, uh, the plant diseases and weeds, it's, it's basically sent you to the pest notes. Um, for the, um, but soon that will change. What happens is we have an awful, we have a lot more information in our database than just 165 pests that are covered in the pest notes. And so we're, and you can access all that information by going in by plan. And we are in the process of making all that information more helpful, to, um, uh, more available to you by going through pests. So for the um, uh, insects and invertebrates, we have, this is new for people who have, have used the website in the past, and it's fairly new. We have this new page. You can take a look. Uh, there's a view all invertebrate pests. This this has got a list of, and I think there's 380 different species here. Oh my gosh! And uh, you can go in by com you can sort by common name, scientific name, family, uh, or order. And so there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, Maybe more than you want. Uh, for other people, uh, you may know. Well, I know it's a, uh, I know it's a, a beetle, uh, but I don't know what kind. Um, and so you can, for instance, go to the beetle section here, and it's going to give you uh, different kinds of beetles. Beetles on uh, beetles that are on fruit, flower, and buds. Indoor beetle pests, leaf stem and seedling beetles. Uh, root beetles, tree boring beetles, and uh, we'll give you pictures of some of these, and you'll see that there's many more species here than are in the pest note. So, um, and these each go to uh, a screen. So, I think this will help you identify your pests a little bit more uh, than um, the way we we are we are in the process of also creating an index to diseases, and I think that should be up sometime this spring. It will, um, and so you'll be able to uh, sort those by plant type, and then that'll cover, uh, I can't remember, but it's certainly over 100 diseases in our database. So these, these are new ways to get at information. Yeah, well, how did you get to that last section where it had all the blocks? The different, like the caterpillars. And the okay. Yes. What, what did you? And probably, on? you know. So, okay. So you go some common pests, and and then it's the insects. Okay. 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 And then um, I do want to draw your attention to the pesticides section here. Um, so we've got a lot. We've got information on pesticides, alternatives to pesticides, and biological control. In the pesticide section, and this again, this has changed in the last, uh, uh, certainly in the last year. So, um, this active ingredient database, which is at the top here, is a database of the pesticides that are mentioned in pest notes, um, and you can get that information. Um, oh, there's also a really great little short video here. What's in this pesticide? You should look at. But uh, so you can go in on any of these uh, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, or molluscicides, and, and get similar information to, on uh, water quality, natural, and these honeybee impacts. 
When Those you, are just home and garden pesticides. When you add the diseases, will it be on the same page? Will it be yeah, so the for the diseases, that'll be, the diseases will be right uh, right here, plant diseases. <laughs> and then on the pesticides, um, I also want to, this National uh, Pesticide Information Center, really good uh, resource for pesticide uh, information. Remember I said if you want a handout to give somebody about it, emit cloverit or diatomaceous earth or something like that, they have, this is a great place to go. Um, we have some online training, information in Spanish, a few videos, and then we've tried to post the videos with the appropriate um, pest notes and pages. Uh, and then for biological Biological control, uh, we have uh, a lot of information. Some of these are just the same information that you have on those quick tests. But we have the Natural Enemies Gallery. You can also get at it um, here. Uh, but the Natural Enemies Gallery is our sort of key resource on biological control. And in here, you'll see uh, common predators, and each of these has a page. I'm going to show you the convergent lady beetle one here, so uh, those will look familiar. This convergent lady beetle page, we actually have uh, information on lady beetle releases and um, some resources that you may be interested in. Uh, there's also, if you scroll down on the natural enemies page here, uh, information on parasites. So you can take a take a look at the parasites of various common insects. This is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of natural enemies, but there, I think there's probably about 30 or 35 species in here, but they're really the most common. You can actually sort these by order and family name, and by scientific name up here. You see here, and uh, another cool thing is you can list them by pest. So. If you go and list them by pest, you can see here for the aphids, they've got a list of the common natural enemies of aphids. So you can go to any of these and um, take, a, take a look at um, some of these natural enemies of aphids. So I'm going back to the general home and garden page now. And... Um, Going to scroll down to the bottom. We've got information here on the UCIPM kiosk. You know what the UCIPM kiosk is? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Well, this is and, and Scott is Scott really. I think he was the instigator of the UCIPM kiosk. This is really Scott's idea, and um, so and it's gone statewide, and it's uh, really a great product. We have uh, 16 of these. Uh, I think five of them are in San Diego County or San Diego and Los Angeles. And um, others are in other parts of the state. And the Master Garden programs take them places all over the state. And we also have them in retail stores and sometimes in uh, various buildings. And so this is a really good tool. And we try to keep on our website where these are. It's, it's kind of slow season now, but you can see in San Diego County, you've got them. Um, uh, at the zoo and two zoos. Oh, and right here. Yeah, it's probably that one. Um, so remember that, and I'm sure. Um, I also want to draw your. Well, we also have a link to the Master Gardener Program offices here, because we do send people to you as well as you send people to us. We say. Um, uh, but we also have some newsletters that you guys might want to uh, subscribe to. One's called the Green Bulletin, and that's for professional landscapers. Uh, and again, Scott's a, uh, a major player in this one. Uh, but you can uh, subscribe, get a free e-subscription to that here. That, and then we also have another one that's for uh, people who work in the retail uh, nursery and uh, garden center thing, and you can also uh, sign up for a free email subscription there. And we have special pages. We have a, we've been working a lot with uh, retail nurseries and garden centers uh, because next to you guys, the master gardeners, another really important place where people get 
uh, information on how to manage pests in the gardens and homes is the garden center. And um, some of the people working in garden centers are really knowledgeable, and some of them aren't. And, and we're trying to help them learn more about integrated pest management. We want them to use university resources, too. And so that's one reason why we have the newsletter. We have a special uh, web page for them, uh, really links to the same kind of information uh, as the other page, but it's a little more tailored for them. So if any of you work in the industry, you may want to take a look at that. Um, uh, we also have information for uh, landscape professionals. And then the last one is special resources for UC Master Gardeners. So see this link here at the bottom? That's you. And so we have this special Master Gardener web page. We used to keep it hidden, but then none of the Master Gardeners could find it. So <laughs> they forgot the code. So now we have it in the public, but some of the pages where you're downloading information, you, you need to be doing it with an a &R, uh, uh, access to the A&R portal. So actually, I've got on the back side of this, you can see the, um, uh, the information there. And a lot of the information is the same information as on the other page, but it's information you may access more regularly. And so we've put it uh, in your, uh, put it up front here. Um, one thing, um, this list of pest notes that uh, I gave you, that's here. You may want to bring that to meetings or something. Um, um, oh, the ant key. We were talking about that. Uh, but we do have this interactive key to ants. Uh, so if you want to identify your ants, is that, what's your question? My question is, I was going to rush off and buy one or more of these books, but now I see information all on here. And even though you're the principal author in this book, and you probably prefer the book. Is there any reason to have both the book as well as access to the IPM website? Well, there is a lot of information in that book that's not on the website, for one for one thing. But, uh, no, I mean, because you can see there's hundreds of, uh, hundreds of natural enemies covered there, and we've only got about 40 here. Okay. But, I mean, if, you're, if you don't have much money, there's a lot of information on the website. Um, and uh, uh, I guess... Yeah, so, but look at the website and if that gives you enough, but there's, you know, we've got every single uh, family of insects that has predators or parasites and they're covered in there, for instance. But it's more information that some people want to know. But this ant key here, I guess I'll link to it, and um, you can go in here and key out your ant, um, your six-legged ant, uh, and it's a dichotomous key. And, and is um, what you do is you, you take your ant and you um, uh, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer, um, and uh, you go through looking at these notes. So that's, that's a tool. Uh, I guess what I want to point out on this um, page that's, that's different, different here is um, we have uh, training materials for you, and this is materials that we've created for you. So the training for master gardeners here um, is important. And we have presentations and, and, and materials for you to use when you're out there training your communities. For instance, on the biological control training page, um, you have um, uh, sort of really a whole program. There's a PowerPoint presentation that you can access. You can also, you can see the sort of video of it here. Um, we have a the natural means poster, which uh, Scott has uh, posted in the back. Uh, you can download it here and print it out at Kinko's if you want to. Uh, we uh, uh, Scott has uh, several copies that are available for you to take when you're out on educational events. Um, we also will give um, Master Gardener programs additional posters if they uh, fill out a. a a form and uh, tell us what they're going to do with them in their communities. Uh, we, so it's sort of a little grant proposal. We have uh, a collection of natural enemies that we'll loan to you for an educational event and, and lots of handouts. So this is sort of a whole educational package if, if your uh, program, uh, if you, your program wants to do an educational program for your community on biological control. And we have several others of these. 
um, on uh, household pests, less toxic pesticides. We have these empty containers that were part of this uh, program, and you can also uh, borrow some uh, empty containers for us if you want to do an educational program on pesticides. Uh, so these are tools which are really for you um, to use in educating yourselves uh, and educating your community. Um, there's kiosk information, and um, anyway, this is for you. So take a look at that. So now I'm going to go back to the home and garden <coughs> page, and I want to see what I, I didn't cover that I wanted to cover. Oh, one thing I do want to point out to you is the weed gallery. Uh, at the side here, this weed gallery. So there's a lot of weeds out there, and sometimes it's hard to identify them. So we have um, uh, a couple of different ways. Um, to, we've got, I don't know, but we certainly have at least 150 different weed species uh, covered here. If you sort of know what the weed is and you just want to check out, we have the list of weeds. Again, uh, by common name, scientific name, family, um, and you can um, sort. But if you don't know what it is, you can key it out. And there's two ways to key it out. So if you uh, uh, have a broadleaf key, broadleaf weed, uh, we have uh, uh, this really interesting way to key it out just looking at like leaf shape, for instance. And so this is really for, you know, people who. So you can, for instance, you have a heart-shaped leaf, and you're going to come up with a, a bunch of weeds that have that kind of leaf, and then you can uh, go and, and check them out and see if that's the weed species you have. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> um, another way, uh, we also have a, um, we also have a dichotomous key, um, and Sometimes this is a little easier to use, but uh, sometimes not. So we have this key to broad weed, weeds and turf, but it covers a lot of the weeds um, that you find in, in landscapes too. And so this is a dichotomous key where you choose one or the other box um, and uh, move on there. So uh, you can use either of these to get down to your weed species. Okay, so. Um, I think that's pretty much what I, I, I wanted to, to cover. What I really want you to do is we can turn on the lights so